Well, let's, let me go back. I, I'm in the middle of a, of a, I used to say to everybody, a 12-year project. That was two years ago I said the middle of it. Now I think it's the middle of a 16-year project. But I'm, we're, on, we're on the way to success. Now I'll go back to 1942. That's the airplane. In yeah, the are we doing a tape now? Uh, where uh, the airplanes, uh, military airplanes, they were. And they belonged, of course, to the U.S. Air Force and were two B-17s and six P-38s. Now, those airplanes were on their way to Europe and through a false uh, situation, and it's too long to go into detail now, there were many reasons they got lost in Greenland, and they landed. And there were 25 crewmen on the eight airplanes. And when we first suggested going in by dog team, the Air Force General said, gee, that's ridiculous. Can't do that. But they had no other way, and we went in and got them. And it turned out to be a very easy rescue, but there they were on the east coast of Greenland, and there were these eight airplanes. Now, we got the crew out, and they had a critique with a general coming from Washington to hear this critique in Greenland. And the 25 men lined up and told their story. Now, the way they told the story was interesting in that the general pointed to one man and he said to this officer, you tell the story, I'm going to hear from everybody else, and they're going to add to the story. They're not going to repeat it. Just add different things. And they did that, and he got around to the first bombardier. And he stood up and he said, General, I have one thing to add that I did. I went over to my B-17 and blew up the Norden bomb site. The general said, that's great. That's what you should have done. Now, do you know of the Norden bomb site? It's the uh, one of the two secrets in World War II. One was the Norden bomb site, and the other was the the Manhattan Project, which turned out to be the great atomic bomb. The, the atomic bomb, the nuclear program. Well, this was terrible uh, to, to uh, realize that on those two B-17s, there were two Norden bomb sites. Well, we got around to the second bombardier, and he stood up and said, General, I have a terrible story to tell you. I did not replete, not blow up my Norden bomb site. And he gave a reason why he didn't. It was just a personal reason. He was so excited at being rescued. They'd been there nine days They were that he got so excited he wasn't at his airplane. He thought, my God, we're going to get out of here, but we have to walk. So it was very exciting to all those fellows at that moment. And he forgot to blow up the Norton bomb site. And there it went, at the time of the critique, which is right after they got out, there it was up on the Greenland ice cap. And I got the nod to go get it. Mm -hmm. And my instructions were, go get it. And of course, the Germans could see the airplanes. This is what made it very exciting. The Germans from the submarines, who had something to do, perhaps, with the landing of these airplanes in the first place, by giving false information, weather and so forth, they uh, w could see the airplanes from the water because they were only in distance 10 miles away. But in distance to walk, it was 18 miles to get around the crevasses and so forth. So the men actually walked out the 18 miles. Well, and I went in and got the, the uh, Norton bombs. I brought that out and just a side remark, it went on another airplane and uh, went to war. And this time it was sent to Africa instead of Europe. The bomb site went to Africa. Well, anyway, the years went by, and, and uh, perhaps I was the last person to be at those airplanes, but they were seen over and over again by, uh, thank you so much, over and over again by people flying over them. And we uh, just know they were there, of course, and uh, in 1981, two of my friends in Atlanta went up there just on a flying trip, and when they got there, they realized uh, about these airplanes, they hadn't thought of them before, and found that, that they could fly out and look. And they flew out over the area, but they couldn't see a thing because in this time, of, they were all covered with snow, as my story will tell you in a minute. And so they came back, and I heard about it and got in touch with them, and 
since then I've become great friends and as three people we've formed a partnership of the Greenland Expedition Society and each year we've been going back there to do the following things. Search for, find, dig down to and salvage those airplanes and once salvaged we'll bring them to the surface if they're flyable Mr. Epps and Mr. Taylor will each fly a P-38 home. Now that will be an exciting thing after they've been there so many years. As again, it was in 1942 when they went down, so it's 47 years. You think the ice and the coal preserved them well I enough? I know to... that they preserved them. The only thing that I can think that could happen to them, as as we see, that they could be crushed. But I don't think oh, so. Oh, by the way, the... Yeah, but I don't think that's the issue. I don't think it is, because while they were still on the surface, the winds blew. They were there a number of years on the surface. The winds blew, and a tiny little uh, pinhole in the side of an airplane, the wind will drive that snow through. Mm -hmm. And I think the inside of the plane, including the wings, are just as full of snow as it was on the outside. It could be. I've seen mm -hmm. snow drift. Either. And when they drifted down and got in underneath, and they kept getting deeper and deeper because the snow got higher and higher. And last year we touched one of those airplanes with a steam probe. And this was a long story up to now. Eight years of jump from the first day to last year. And they were found by by subsurface radar, uh, subsurface radar. And when the scientists said, this is the spot where one of the planes is, we cranked up the steam program and went down with a steam probe. Is that the same type that they use around here in the winter for thawing the pipe and stuff? Essentially, yes. We ran it through 300 feet of hose and on the end was a pipe to keep the nozzle going straight and on the end of that pipe was a nozzle so it would go mm -hmm. straight down. Well, we made 20 descents and hit the airplane nine times. Now, are they, they're all metal, right? Oh, yes. There's some fabric to them? No. No fabric at all. They're all aluminum. That's right. And, of course, steel for the other parts yeah. of the airplane, the landing gear and the mm -hmm. rubber. And that. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Are you sure? I'm positively, absolutely sure that one's true. And this one's... I oh, wish you had the kind of... of See, I know. wish you had the kind of a pen that would write your name. You gotta watch your step going yeah. down here. You gotta go sideways, yeah. All right. Okay. Now, Trent. There we go. Thanks so much again. Uh